presence in a wonderful way, Lord, as we gather in your name. Lord, we just pray that, Lord, we would recognize your ability to do anything and everything that we need in our lives this morning. And that your presence would fill this place and fill every heart in such a way that we would receive from you, Lord, what we need, that hour of, of need in our life. And that, God, you would minister to us through the worship and through the word, Lord. through everything that's done today. May our hearts be touched, God. lifted up in worship and adoration to you. And I'll bless you for it, Lord. We ask it in your name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen.
Uh, Sister Brenda has a special announcement and want you all to get this. This is a wonderful film. It's being advertised a lot and we want to promote it from our church too. It's, it's uh, something uh, that uh, you, people ask me, am I Democrat or Republican? I say, I'm neither. I'm pro-life. Yes. April 17th, there's going to be a movie at Eastgate called Breakthrough. I don't know if everyone has seen the trailer about that. And I would love for all of us and the youth to support this. It's about a young man and he's with a group of kids and he falls through the ice and he is in the water for 15 minutes. And one of the rescuers that come to get him does not believe in God. But once he sees what God does, this young man, as the mother prays for, is raised from the dead. And this happened right here in St. Louis. So I'm really excited and hoping that everyone will come out and join us. The price is $6.49 for adults. Children 2 to 12 is $4.49. And it's April 17th on a Wednesday evening. The time is 6.45. So those, I'm sure, Rob, will you be picking up the you? Okay, you'll be picking up the you. And then I guess we can all meet at the theater, but be there early so we can all go as a group. We want to support this movie. This is wonderful that we're getting good Christian films out there. So I'd love for everyone to come out there can. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. If you sign up, I'd love it if you could pay today. That would be great. And then Wednesday, we're hoping to get the money from the youth. Is that right, Rob? Okay. And then we'll get the money from the youth. So uh, if you possibly can, let's support this movie and get out there and see. I think it'll be really <coughs> And I'm sorry, that was not the film I was thinking of. I, was, I got some bad information. It's good information, though. They have that new film coming out planned, unplanned, and it's very powerful. And I that's what we're going to see. But that sounds powerful, too. And uh, uh, there's some great, I love these faith-based films that are coming out now. Uh, and they're getting a great, great response. And it's a good smack in the face to Hollywood. I love it. Yeah. Every time I can slap Hollywood, I slap Hollywood. Yeah. And, uh, everything but Holly over there in Hollywood, believe me. And uh, far from holy. So we, we want to back faith-based films very, very much. Amen? Amen. Amen. So good to have Mona with us. Let's give her a hand. chemo and she is doing great and we're believing God for good good reports. Any latest report? I'll go to the doctor tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. Okay, let me know. And uh, we're believing God. Yes. Yes. God's been so good to her. Amen. Amen. Let's just thank the Lord for his goodness to Mona. Lord, we thank you for Mona and the, and the blessing you've given to her, the strength you've given to her through this time of going through therapy and chemo and all that's just taken a toll on her body, but to see her this morning with the smile, with the joy of the Lord, with the strength of God, is such a blessing. And Lord, we ask you for a good report tomorrow, a good report. Every one of us, Lord, are asking for a good report for us, and we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Yes. Not one day, she said. Not one day she didn't be pressed.
to see everyone this morning. God is so good to us. And we have some special things planned today. I have been under the weather for about three or four days now, so I'm a little weak. I do, usually don't display that while I'm preaching and everything uh, because I, it hits me afterwards. The adrenaline gets moving, you know. Never sure when people get a lot of adrenaline, they lift up cars and everything else, and then when it's all over with, they're exhausted. Well, that's me usually after a Sunday morning service. But uh, got a little, a little dry, so uh, from the medications I've been taking, so it's going to be a little bit difficult. But we have a lot in store for today. Uh, we have a baby dedication. I love baby dedications. Uh, dedicated all my children. I've dedicated my grandchildren, and I've dedicated a lot of children in this church. And I have a, a thing I always do for each child that I dedicate. Uh, I, I give them a Bible, a little Bible. Sister Nicole has always bought these for the church and supplied little Bibles for, that's Dave, Nicole's mom. And uh, she's always supplied this. I told her just a couple weeks ago, she's been put in a, a rehab center now. And uh, I told her that I'm still giving out those New Testaments that you've given to me. And uh, you can let her know, Dave, I gave another one away today. Um, then I always give a letter that I write. And it's to be opened on their 13th birthday. And uh, they open it. It's a challenging letter to them. And I've got phone calls back from kids that I dedicated when they were babies. And they called me out of nowhere. It said, Brother White, they just led the letter to me. And uh, beautiful. Then we give them a little uh, uh, dedication letter to go back to the parents, too. Uh, and so at this time, we want to, to do that little ceremony. And uh, we don't baptize babies. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. We talked about water baptism. But we do believe in dedicating it to the yeah. scriptures. And uh, 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 Hannah dedicated her little son. Job actually was the first one we read about who dedicated his children to the Lord. It was the first book written uh, uh, in the Word of God. You have Genesis, but actually Job uh, was a real book that was written first before even uh, Genesis. And so uh, Job lived before Moses did. And he dedicated chapter 1 his children every day, continually. He dedicated his children to the Lord. And we see that Hannah dedicated her little child, Samuel, to the Lord. See the great things that he did for God. And then remember Mary and Joseph bringing Jesus on the 40th day to be dedicated in the temple. And what a, a, a wonderful experience that was. And from these scriptures and others, we, we believe in dedicating children to the Lord. And sometimes parents get saved later on in life and they brought their children. We're going to have a dedication coming up at the end of this month where the kids are a little bit older. But I said, hey, they still need to be dedicated and we will do it. And uh, uh, I always get a thrill out of doing this. And today we have a family that's coming to dedicate their little uh, newborn baby boy, uh, little Logan Charles Dean. And... Uh, we're going to be dedicated in just a few moments. That's James and uh, Michelle. It's a little baby boy and a little miracle boy. We didn't know if he's going to make it or not. We went through quite, quite a battle. But we're just so happy that uh, the Lord seemed fit to give us a little Logan. Now, how many little children are a gift from God? Yeah. They are a gift. And uh, never take that for granted. And when we come and we're giving our child back to God, that's what really child dedication is. And it's a dedication of that child, but also it's a dedication of the parents to the will of God. And uh, uh, Abraham dedicated uh, his one and only son, Isaac, in Genesis 22 in a very, very unique and special way. One that was probably the greatest dedication that any man has ever made of a child back to God. God told, Je Moses, uh, told Abraham, in Genesis chapter 22, that I want you to give your son back to me. I want you to take him up on Mount Moriah, and I want you to dedicate him as a burnt offering unto me, a whole burnt offering. I want you to lay him on the altar. I want you to slay him before my presence. That's my son that I gave to you, and I want him back. Abraham was so committed to God that he said, yes, Lord. And he took his one and only son, Isaac, all the way up that hill, got him up there, built the altar, got ready to offer his son up as a sacrifice to, to God. When all of a sudden, as he was pulling the knife and getting ready to do it, and God knew he would. 
And in Hebrews it tells us he was going to do it because he believed if he killed his son, God would raise him back from the dead. Yeah. That's the faith that Abraham, that's why he's the father of our faith. But as he blew the knife, he was ready to slay his son to give him back to God, who had given him that child miraculously. The age of 99, and Sarah at 90, this little child was born. And now he's asking for him back. God stopped him. There was a bleeding of a goat in the, in the vines. And God offered another sacrifice for Abraham's son. And Isaac grew up to become a living sacrifice for God. And there's wonderful thoughts that I, I want to bring out this morning very quickly concerning giving back your child to God. What does it say? What does it mean when you give a dedicated child? I mean, if you're sure that you haven't dedicated your children, I would encourage you to do it. Because it's doing four things. It's confirming. It's a confirmation of your love for God. You're saying, Lord, you're the most important one in my life. Even more important than my life, more important than my children. God, you are the supreme one that I love. And when you offer your children back to God, that's what you're saying. I love my child. I thank you for my child. But, God, my love is first for you. I've seen children uh, that parents love the children so much that they sacrifice God for their children. And then later on you see the children's lives totally wrecked by sin. The children run the home instead of the parents. They even run God. Control the home. And it's sad. But when you give your child to God in dedication, you say, Lord, you're the first love of my life. And I'm going to teach that to my child. Giving your child to God is a clarification of ownership. You're saying, Lord, you gave me this child. This child is not mine. This child is yours. And so you're just clarifying that. When you bring that child, you're saying, Lord, this child is the heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of my, of, 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 of my womb is God's reward. God's reward. And so you recognize that this is a gift from God. Amen? And thirdly, it's a commitment. It's a commitment to raise this child in the ways of God. And the parents are doing that. When they come, they're, they're making a step towards God, saying, Lord, not only is this your child, but I have promised that you have given this child back to me to, as a stewardship, to be in stewardship of his life and, and to train him up in the way that he should go. I promise you, Lord, I am going to do that. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord and this little child is going to know that God is first in our home. And then giving your child to God is claiming God's plan and promises for that child. Abraham could have held back Isaac and said, no, Lord, I'm not going to do it. But if he had done that, he would have robbed Isaac of all the blessings and all the purposes and all the plans that God had for Isaac. He would have been a nobody and we would have known nothing about him, a no man and a wasted life. But he became one of the fathers of our faith, went on to become a very wealthy man, a blessed man. Then from Isaac came our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Abraham would have missed all of that if he had failed to give back Isaac. To the Lord. We do not know what little Logan is going to be in the years to come. But I believe this is a good way to start for that little boy. He's only about four months old now. And uh, they've been after me for several months now to get this baby dedicated. And uh, I got sick and was down for a couple months, and so he was really laid back. But uh, uh, I'm happy for this day. I want to ask if Jimmy and Michelle would come this morning with Logan. Charles Dean. Hallelujah. Pretty handsome critter there, isn't he? He's come a long way in his last four months. The first few weeks there was a little scary for him, but uh, the show had a tough pregnancy. But uh, we're so happy to see him. He's not lost any weight over the last three months. <laughs> he has gained and gained and gained and doing so wonderful. And we're so proud to be able to dedicate this child. And so, as you look at me, I want to ask you three questions. I want you to answer them with I do. 
In the sight of God, in the presence of all these witnesses, family and friends and people that are going to help you with this child, be a part of the Sunday school and the church as he grows to see him becoming a, a little saint like Liera is almost. She's, we're still working on her. <laughs> but you solemnly undertake to bring up this child and in the fear and admonition of the Lord. You promise to do that. Do you promise to lead Logan Charles Dean early in his life to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior? And do you promise that to the best of your ability and the help of the grace of God to live a life, a life that this child can follow in your service to the Lord, a life that will be a light to lead him closer and closer to Jesus Christ? Do you promise to do that? I believe you're going to. And that's why I want to dedicate this little man to the Lord in the presence of everyone this year. I wonder if we all could stand. No, no crying. If I don't look at her, they're not as apt to cry, so I'm not going to look at her. I love children. I love children. Uh, it's just part of me. Yeah. yeah. And his name means little warrior. And Charles means a strong man. So that tells me he's going to be a little warrior that's going to become a strong warrior for God. Yeah. And may he fight the fight of faith. May he live his life to bring glory and honor to Jesus Christ and always exalt his Savior as the commander-in-chief of his life. This little warrior we want to dedicate him to the Lord this morning. Amen. Right. Father, we lift up a Logan to you. God, we ask you to place your hand upon this child right now in a very special way. That this moment, God, Lord, it would be written down in heaven that Logan was dedicated to you, Lord, and that God you would take him and begin to lead him and direct him and guide him by your Holy Spirit into your perfect plan and purpose that you have for his life. And that Logan would grow to love and serve you and to fulfill that plan that you have designed for him. Lord, we place him in your will right now. And we ask you to give Jimmy and Michelle wisdom, wisdom from above, to train up this child in the way that he should go. And the Lord, you would give Logan ears to hear and a heart to receive the truths of God, that he would grow to be a warrior, a man of God, a strong man of God, and that your anointing would rest upon him and that he'd do great and mighty things for you. And we will bless you for it. So, Lord, we dedicate him now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Take him and make him yours. In Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. And let me give you your, your uh, bumper of stuff here. I always like writing these letters, and, uh, and I get the thrill when they call me. And uh, read it to me, remind me what I wrote to them. So God bless you both, and uh, may the Lord help you in the journey you're going to take with this duo. Let's do it. I don't think I took them off from that. I did it without being reminded. Isn't that amazing? You may be seeing it, boy. I thought I missed that one. But uh, uh, if we can have our ushers come, we'd like to kick them off in for the Lord. And uh, do what you know. You're not giving to the church. I hope you're not giving to the church. If you're doing that, it's a wrong motive. You're giving to Christ. Uh, we are. You're giving to His church, yeah. the body of believers. And uh, God designed all this. We didn't. He designed even how to support it. It's all. Scripturally backed by His Word, by tithes and offerings and the giving of God's people. As God has blessed us and prospered us, so should we give to the Lord. Amen? Amen. So some can give more, some can give less. It's all in how we're able and have been blessed by God to give unto Him. We, we ask you to give as God has given to you for His glory. Amen? Amen? Brother Dave, would you ask God's blessing from the other? Lord, 
God bless you for your giving this way. Good morning. Don't you love the family of God? Yes. <laughs> it's such a joy to be here this morning as it is every week just to be able to come together and worship Him. Um, all I can think about this morning is I was just spending some time with the Lord and thinking about what we would have for today is standing on that solid rock, Him as our current foundation, and then how he finds our battles for us. Exodus 14, 14 says to be still. Like, be still and he will fight the battle for you. And there's also another scripture that says, be still and know that I am God. Yes. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted <laughs> in the earth. And that is what God is desiring to do. Aren't you thankful for what he did in this place last week? Yeah. What a celebration of people coming and declaring all that he is. In the middle of that, you know, the enemy doesn't like it, does he? When people are coming into their true identity in him and just declaring that, hey, I'm going to live for God, I'm going to live for Christ. And I don't, I don't want to take a lot of time here, but as I was just thinking about this this morning, I just felt like, you know, God's doing a deep work in this place. He's wanting to put things in order. And he's been doing that in a lot of our lives, and I know I keep referring to that. But I'm just going to be vulnerable and transparent and real with you right now. Part of what God has been doing in me, you know, I'm just being honest, I've been sick for like months. And that has never, ever happened to me, ever. And that I can think of. And just in the past couple of weeks, there's been different instances, different things that have happened, and every time something rises up in me and I'm just like, oh. And what it was, I'm just being honest, God is showing me that I have had like a spirit of rejection on me that has been trying to squelch me, to try to put out the light, you know, to try to hold me down and keep me back. There have been so many days you guys don't see that I've been barely functional. <laughs> Whether And I really have been physically sick, but God's like, this is why. It's because this is here, and I want you to let me have it. I want you to let me take it, because I want to, I want to pray. I say, God, I want to be whole, physically, mentally, spiritually whole in you. And as he's doing that in me, and as he's doing that in other lives, he's been, he was already started this work this morning in some other lives just within our team. I believe that he wants to do that in this church this morning. And I'm just telling you, as he was setting me free through process yesterday, it was a process of a few hours, to be honest. And, and then this morning again, I literally have had not only all the sinus stuff going on, but so much like pain in my legs, just like weakness. Like where I physically felt so weak. I literally felt strength coming back to my legs. Oh, yeah. I know that sounds crazy, but I knew it was God. And it was His strength aligning my physical body back up because as He was healing me emotionally and physically, he would, He's able to get in and do that deep work that he wants to do yeah. to bring freedom to every part of our lives. Isn't that what you want to walk in? Oh, yeah. you want to walk in. So sometimes we have to walk through a process to get to that freedom. That's what God, it's because he loves us. And he wants us to be bold and confident in him. So I just know that God is doing a deep work in this place. And I don't know what it is for you. I know what that was, what God was speaking to me. But I know it can be rejection. It can be anxiety. It can be depression. It can be so many things that people don't see. You know? There's so many things that people don't see. The battle in our mind. That the enemy will try to come in and overrun us. But we're here today to declare that we are going to take on the mind of Christ in oh, this. Yeah. And we're going to allow him to continue this deep work because he is putting things in order because he wants to bless this house. Yeah. He wants to bless your home. Oh, yeah. He wants to bless this church. He wants to set us in a place to where we are able to reach the 
he's sitting in this nation around us that so desperately needs Christ. So, as we are worshiping this morning, I was just thinking about this, and I, I feel that I would have to go ahead to do it. Um, and we're going to go through worship, but as we're doing that, I'm going to ask um, Sister Roy left, so if you could go find her. Um, I'm going to ask Sister Susie and Sister Roy, Sister Brenda, Brother Roy, um, to just come up here. And if you can think and identify something in your life today, you know what that is. I don't know what that is. But I know for me it was rejection. I want you to come up and we are going to sing, we are going to praise, we are going to worship. And if there's things that you've broken off of you, I want you to come in and allow these leaders in our church to walk you through a prayer of freedom and deliverance today. Yeah. Is that what you want? Yeah. Does anybody want to be delivered and set free today? Amen. God is good in this place. We're going to worship you. I'm going to challenge you. You say you have to come to a place where you're desperate saying, you know what, I don't want this anymore. I want to be whole, whole, completely made whole in you so that your purposes in me can be fulfilled. Amen? Is that okay? Come and stand across the front.
Let's say the Lord, the enemy would desire to sift you like wheat. The enemy would desire to come against you and defeat you. The enemy of your soul, that liar, that slanderer, that devil, has no power. No power. I have overcome him. I was manifested to destroy his works. And he is nothing but a liar and he is defeated. And so I would say to you, my children, stand in the victory that I have won for you. I have died and was rose again in the power of the Spirit of God that you might overcome every affliction, every attack that the enemy would bring against you. And so I would say to you this morning, listen to my words. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror through Christ who lives in you. Trust in me to be your Christ, to be your anointed one, to be the one that will lead you through every battle in victory for my glory. And oh, when it's all over with, shall we all rejoice together around the throne of God of the victory that's been wrought through my death, burial, and resurrection, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 tries to roll over my bones. It's the heart that comes to steal the joy I own. The brokenness and pain is all I know. I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. Oh. 